to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center, located on East 7th Street in Joplin, where they are passionate about sharing the freedom and forgiveness found in Jesus Christ. Now, here's Pastor Dan with this week's edition of In Him. So there he is, camped out in his tent with all his royal servants taking care of his bidding and wondering what we're going to do. And there's Goliath saying, send me your champion. Saul should have championed the cause. If he wasn't willing, find somebody else. But every time he looked in the direction of one of his men, there was a trickle of yellow running down the leg. Sorry, ladies, if this upsets your sensibilities, but I'm preaching to men today to be warriors. It's just not pretty when you're looking for a champion and they're wetting themselves. So a young man walking in and saying, why are you allowing this to happen, Saul? It gets Saul's attention. I want to ask you today, gentlemen, that the first time you hear some other man whose heart is beating with a passion for Jesus say something positive about the power of the name of the Lord God Jehovah, it always tricks, it pops my heart into beating a little faster. Nothing that causes me to be more impassioned about loving and serving God than when a man at whatever age he is, a youth, Or a man who's like Abraham who called up 318 of his own house to go whoop the enemy. But when they say something like this, I believe that the God of Israel will defend and overcome. Saul got just a little bit of hope. Then he says, here, wear my armor. That had to have been the most silliest thing to conceive. That a man who stands so tall to offer his armor... And so David is standing there, and it's being put on him, and he realizes this will never fit, and he says, I've not proven. I need you gentlemen to hear something. The warrior in you needs to understand, never wear another man's armor. You've not proven his armor. Look for the Lord himself to give you the weapons of warfare that he's promised us in Ephesians. Can I get a witness? For God has told you that there are weapons of your warfare that are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. David said, thank you, but no thank you. I know what I need to do. I need to go take care of this one just like I have, the bear and the lion. Can you see him now? I can. He goes out there, and he's on the top of the hill, and he runs. Oh, my God, Joe. Every time I think about it, I can see the last of this uh, movie about the, what's the rings? The Lord of the Rings. And I see Orlando Bloom. He's, what's his name in the movie? What is it? Legolas, I know who went to see the movie. I see Legolas run up and he jumps on top of this behemoth of an elephant and he fights the enemy and then he kill, he literally kills this giant elephant with his arrows and he comes sliding down the bottom of that elephant's trunk and the way he slides down, don't tell me it's because of his elven anointing. This man, this warrior slides down and lands right there. My God, I feel that anointing right there to be slim and trim and slide down the trunk of an elephant. You're looking at me saying, I see Abbott or Costello, but I don't see Legolas. That's okay. It don't matter what you see. What matters is what's on the inside of a man's heart. Oh, what's on the inside of a man's heart? Is there boldness and courage? Is there the name of the Lord? What's on the inside of your heart? I can see him now. 
just just whooping the enemy. And here comes David running like Legolas, not Legos, but Legolas running down into the valley of Elah. He pauses there at the brooks and he picks up those stones, smooth stones, Alabama sunset stones, I think is what they were. Puts them in his little pouch. He takes out one. And here is the behemoth just a yelling, oh, 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 I'm offended. Why do you send a child out to fight me? You need to mind your P's and Q's. When the enemy starts to accuse you of being a scrawny little runt, he doesn't know his day has come to an end. When the enemy bloisters, whoa, that's the moment you don't shake. That's the moment you stand secure as a brave heart untainted. Put one stone in that sling. He begins to swing it. I don't come against you with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the holy God of Israel. And he released that stone. And the stone went right to the spot in the middle of the enemy mocking. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, the flap of his helmet flies up, and when the stone hit his forehead, the angel of the Lord drove that stone in, dropped him where he stood. The bladder of every Philistine shook. David didn't go, oh, that was good. David knew full well what would happen. When he dropped him, then he walked towards him. And he pulled the sword of Goliath out of its sheath. And he stood there over him and lifted the sword up. And he executed Revelation 19 that we just saw a moment ago. He who is faithful and true executes judgments and makes war. And he removed the foul mouth inside the head of that enemy from his shoulders. And when he did, as I've said before, streams of yellow urine come falling down the other side of the valley because the Philistines wet themselves. Yes, I just said something gross. It's because I'm a man and we're talking about the warriors. And then they turn tail and begin to run. Now it's interesting. When a boy who knows his God and he's filled with the promise of the covenant, rises up like a warrior and removes the head of the enemy, how God's men of wimp <laughs> and weakness can rise up, come out from behind the rocks, pull out their sticks and bows, and go running after the enemy. The Bible says they chased them down. David revealed the head of his enemy. I think right here is a good place for me to ask you. Are you willing to be the kind of warrior that won't be distracted by another man's armor? Are you willing to be the warrior who won't allow your own brethren to mock you and shame you into sneaking on out the camp? We're here trying to take care of business. David could have mocked him right, but David had every right to say, I see how bold and strong you are. David could have said, you remember when daddy picked you for king? But the Lord picked me. David didn't throw anything in their face. He just walked in the realm of his position before God. He was and is perpetually a warrior. I'm asking men in this house to rise up and be warriors that will protect your family. The rest of my message, you'll have to come back and get part two. And it'll talk about the application of how that warrior's heart protects and cares and ministers to your bride, and your children, and your communities. But today I need to know if you are willing to walk away with the picture of David who has done what had to be done, silenced the foul mouth of the enemy. You have got to know how to silence the enemy. Sometimes it requires a sword. I remember one day, one time, a season of my life, we were walking through a difficult place and it was, it was a struggle. 
and there were mouths and tongues that were wagging. But a man hearing the sound of my voice today came up to me in one of those prophetic moments. When everything seemed pathetic, he came with prophetic. And he said, just need you to know this. You have my sword and my shield. When he said, you have my sword and my shield, he was saying that I'll fight with you and I will defend you. And he knew that I'm no different than the other man. Every one of us men are yet in transformation, growing and becoming what God wants us to be. None of us are perfect, but are you, are you letting God be a perfecting force in your life? But I remember that day when he said, you have my sword and my shield. I said to myself, self, you're not alone. Rise up, find the stone, put it in the sling. Let the sound of that sling be heard in your ears. The sound of your intercession. Proclaim the word of God and release it at the enemies of God. And the day will come where the sword will remove the foul mouth. Now, I didn't kill anybody literally, just in case you needed to know that. I know you know I'm from not far from Detroit. I got one giggle and a couple of, huh? <laughs> Northern Michigan, what they will do for you for half a six pack is amazing. Preaching them in today. Might depend on the brand, but I'm just telling you. There's a spiritual warfare that needs to be fought and won. I'm not asking you to cut somebody's head off today, uh, human-wise. I'm asking you to cut the head of the enemy off. Satan, silence him. First, remember, your song is for an audience of one, Jehovah. When he puts songs on the inward part of you, oh my, oh my God. When God puts a song on the inside of you, it's not just for you. I'm still singing the songs of David, the warrior. He wrote, to him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more, and I will write upon him the names of my God and the names of the city of my God. The, when I read his Psalms, singing the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand, we will march right up to the victor's side, right into Canaan's land. There are songs that were written in a time, and they're for a time and for times and for times again. Let the song of the Lord be birthed in you. Let the sound of your praise rise up to God. And let your heart be true. O oh, men of God. I'm looking at mighty men here today. So I'm going to ask every man to stand to your feet in this house. Just every man. You are called, anointed, to walk in power and authority. You must understand, gentlemen, some of you will have certain skills in the natural that reflect such a beautiful expression of athleticism. There's some of you, there's one on the front row. When he runs with a ball in his hands or tosses that ball, son, I, I admire that when I see you when I see you play ball, I'm like, Lord. When I watch another man on the back row, always keeps his eyes open. He works for the PBR. You never know when a demonically inspired bull wants to hurt you. He walks with his eyes open on all sides of his head. Don't ask me how. To make sure he doesn't get gored by a bull. I mean, I, I, you have so many skills. So, some of you standing here today have skills I have not yet discovered. But I say to you that in all your natural skill sets, there are spiritual skill sets that your family needs you to walk in. Play the song that the Lord has put in your heart for the audience of one. 
Let the God of creation hear you sing. Pastor Dan, I only sound good in the shower. Practice there when you get up in the morning, but throughout the day, sing to the God of Israel and the universe. If you don't think you sound good, play your music loud enough so that people think you sound good. But sing, O men of God, and pray, O men of God. Don't pray, just now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep that works when you're a little man. But there comes a time for you to pray some other prayers. In the name of Jesus, I appropriate the blood of the Savior over my house. In the name of Jesus, for my family that's not quite as close to the Lord as you need to be, faith is like a rope. You ought to throw out the lasso of rope. Begin to pray them in. Come on, somebody. Faith is like a rope. You just Sometimes you got to cast the rope of faith and draw them back to the kingdom. You might know how to cuss, but do you know how to prophesy? I said, maybe early in your life, you had learned some, I learned new words when we first got that little one into our house. Jesus, be a fence all around me. That wasn't what he was singing. I'm saying, Jesus. I remember the first time he went into one of them spells. We call them in the, in, in, in the professional world, escalations. Mama and daddy would call it fits. And the first one, he started throwing out hybrid cussing. Gentlemen, when the hybrid cussing came, they were blendings of words I had never heard. I didn't know this part cuss and that part cuss could go together. I thought to myself, he don't even know how to cuss right. No, you don't understand. When the first time he said this one word, I looked at him and said, what did you say? How ignorant was that to ask him to cuss a second time? And he said it again loud. I said, one more time because I don't think I really got that. He did. He gave it to me a third time, and I just said, no, I know those don't go together, but they don't sound nice. I said, okay, that's what I thought you said. I turned around and sat at my desk and pretended I was typing. I was really going like this. Get this devil out of my house. Get this devil out of my house. I rebuke you, Satan. I was in my office, and I thought I had not had that much. Nobody's ever cussed at me in my office. Lord of mercy. I know you're standing. I see you. I've been standing the whole day. So this kid, I ignored him for about four minutes because I didn't know what to do. Had he been Dan Dan or David or Zachariah, (laughs) I'd have adjusted myself right there. But that wasn't the case with this one. You know, love and logic is what we're practicing. Five minutes later, I feel the little hand because I stayed in peace. Because I didn't go, ugh, feel a little hand on my shoulder. I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry. I won't use the F word. You know, the F word was never part of it. But if you can imagine parts of words that just, and I thought, okay, praise God. Thank you. I forgive you. Go sit down. You have to learn how to war in ways you've not warred before. I said, Jesus, if you'll give me a way, if you'll show Cindy and I a way, we'll love this child until his biological mother can have him again. Sooner than later, Lord. And she died on Good Friday. And I had to learn how to war all over again. A whole new way of praying, a whole new way of declaring, a whole new way of speaking the Word of God over his life. He now belongs to us. He bears our name. He don't cuss like that no more. Not because he's afraid of me, but because he's afraid of Pastor Cindy's eyebrows. They have a language. They sling a stone that David never dreamed of throwing. 
her eyebrows can say, what did you say? And in the name of Jesus, it's an anointing. I know that I've learned that language far before we ever had children. I know you're still standing. I want to know if you'll be a warrior. Some warriors got to stand in the gap for their family. Some warriors just have to stand and say, I believe that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And though my child may wander or my child may go through difficult times or my house might feel the oppression or an attack of the enemy, we will arise and stand fast and see the salvation of the Lord. So I'm looking at men today. I'm just asking that you'll say this. I am a warrior. I'm not talking about road warriors. You got Listen, you're, that's not a warrior because you know how to honk your horn. The women are giggling because they've seen it. You're not a warrior because you can honk your horn. And you're not a warrior because you can pull that little punk through the window and show him you a Mac daddy right there. You, that's not a warrior. A warrior is the ability to not show your children how to behave like the punk. Preaching so good today. Float like a butterfly. I can dream. Sing like a bee. It's time for you and I to just man up, warrior up, let your wife know that you will stand in the place of intercession and protect. So if you don't mind reaching your hand towards me, gentlemen, I want to pray for you. If they don't know you today, Jesus, I ask that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would come upon every man in this room right now and convict his heart that this is the day to surrender to you, Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, Son of David, He who executes judgment and makes war and establishes the kingdom of peace forever. You who are Prince of Peace, come rule in the hearts of these men. Show them the power of being a warrior, protecting their bride, loving and caring for their children with a bow or a sword in one hand and the building tools of the Word of God and the other, strengthening the family, the community, the church. The kingdom is built by kings and warriors. I ask that you would establish in the heart of these men these truths this day. Ladies, stand with your men or just among them, if you would. Okay, 1202. If you're here today and you are struggling with just walking in that position as a man, I want you to be bold as a lion and just step out from wherever you are and come to the front and just face me. Just if that's you as a man and you're ready, there's the first man. Is there another man who says, I, I, I just want, I need, here comes the second man. Here's the third. If you're a man today and you're saying, I know I need Christ to become the warrior that beats on the inside of my heart. Is there any other men? Come on, Reggie. Come on, Pastor Rick. Come on. Some of you prayer, my prayer team members, the men of my prayer team, would you just come and take your place? Come, come stand. Here's another one. Look at these men that are coming now. I just believe God wants to pound on the inside of your heart. The heart bring your heart into alignment with his. So the rhythm of your heart beats with the rhythmic sound of the heart of your Father God. This is what, there's another man coming. I see him. I, I'm just saying today, I believe this is that day where God wants to just align your heart with his heart, where your heart will beat with strength. The ability to just be that righteous and moral man. A righteous and moral man. John, there's a man standing here. Would you stand behind him? believe that this is that day. Maybe we could all just confess this together. Let's just say this. Jesus Christ, I surrender to you. Be the Lord of my life. Lord of my mind, my will, my emotions. Be Lord of my body and bring my spirit to life. I choose you this day. I surrender to you this day. I give you all I am and all I'm not. 
and ask you to establish your kingdom, your heart, your word in my life this day. Now, Father, I pray for these men who have come forward and any man who's still contemplating it. And as we are touching and agreeing, we ask that you would reveal yourself to them in a brand new and a fresh way. First of all, Lord, I ask that you would, you would help them to be reminded of your instructions. Your word is the roadmap. It's the manual for how to be a warrior in your kingdom, a righteous and a moral man a man of life and peace and wholeness. I ask that today, Lord, your word would be established in their hearts. You said in your word that your word was like a lamp and a light to our pathway and our footsteps. I'm asking today that you'll break the lie. Can I get some men just to pray in agreement with me today? Father, I ask that you break the lie that they cannot have success in their life. I understand, Lord, that there have been um, reciprocating issues. There have been habitual brokenness. And I ask that you would bring strength and life and overwhelm them with the power of your righteousness and your goodness. I ask the day that your peace would set upon them. Lord, you're not looking for little weak need men. You're looking for mighty men of God who know how to pull down strongholds. Walk in the power of your name. I ask that the name of the Lord would be established in your heart and you'd walk We are dressed out knowing you're a son of the Most High God, a child of God, a man of valor, that these men would be filled with the wonder of your grace that is sufficient. Thank you for listening to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center. Listen to this broadcast again at KNEO.org. You can also download a podcast version of today's message by searching KNEO on iTunes. Joplin Family Worship Center is located on East 7th Street in Joplin and has ministries for all ages. They invite you to join them this week for Sunday morning worship at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. Find out more at jfwc.org or facebook.com slash Joplin Family Worship Center. Follow Pastor Dan on Twitter at Daniel H. Wormuth. Thank you for listening. And remember, in Him, you are free.